What is going on everyone? It is Greg and Matt here from Project Unbroken. Today we got a question in, it was more directed towards Matt, and it was how hard was it to get off Suboxone? You know, Suboxone is one of the more commonly used drugs to get off of heroin and opiates. Probably usually the first step, you know, people don't usually go to methadone first, they do Suboxone first. And someone asked how hard was it to get off? You know, what's your experience with Suboxone? You know, did you take it, might as well expand on, did you take it multiple times? How hard was it to get off once you eventually got off it? Okay, um, so I, I, I guess I used Suboxone on and off for a while. I know that was when Greg and I um, were just trying to figure out how to get out of our heroin addiction. We had a couple bad experiences with just sketchy doctors that were prescribing um, Suboxone, but just they were basically, um, they call them pred predatory doctors, just ripping off drug addicts. Um, <clears throat> so that wasn't successful. And then, you know, I tried buying it on the streets for a while and that just is a recipe for disaster because they're like, no, but I, you know, I don't have any spots, but I have heroin. So, um, that didn't work. And then eventually later down the road, I, you know, this is kind of, uh, after I, I had my experience with rehab and I was not using heroin but I knew that I needed help. So how did like how did you get to, like who did you ask? Like did you go do the research yourself? Did you tell your you know your a loved one and they yeah. helped you or like how did that work? Yeah, that I, so this was again after rehab. Everybody knew where I was at. I kind of talked before about how I um, laid some accountability on myself by being very transparent with, and, I, and I'm lucky to have uh, my parents who were uh, a huge support system for me. So I talked to them. I was like, look, this is where I'm at. I need to find um, a clinic or a doctor or somebody that can prescribe me with Suboxone in a way that is going to get me away from heroin in a successful method, in a, a method I guess. Because, again, a lot of the doctors back then, Greg and I literally went to a doctor. He charged us 600 bucks uh, to get in the door for, for just Greg to go in. And gave him literally like eight pills or something, yeah, or seven like pills. Week, maybe two at the most were. Yeah, and that was just uh, irresponsible to say the least. We've talked about this guy before. He's had his medical license revoked, and um, he was he got in a lot of trouble for that because it, it's just that's you will nobody will be successful if you're coming from doing heroin every day for years to give somebody giving you seven suboxone yeah. pills. It just doesn't. But, um, so my family helped me, you know, research, we found a doctor that, it, I mean, it was, it was not easy to get in to the clinic. They had limited spaces available. They could only work with so many people because Suboxone was a newer, uh, maintenance drug back then. I really like how you talked about the accountability. We talked about, we talked about that. I believe the video was like the number one way that we prevented re relapse. Yeah. If you haven't seen that, make sure you check it out because it's really important that you know about that accountability. I think that's a big thing. Yeah, we can put a link to that video yeah, somewhere yeah, here. Check that out though because that, that, that was a huge for me. All right, so anyways, you went in. Like, what did they start you on? Like, what were you – like, what dose were you taking when you first started? you remember? Um, it was eight milligrams a day. Okay. Okay. Um, which was which was fine for me, and I, I I should you know going back I think it was actually two eight milligram pills a day. They the the clinic that I started with was basically like you know we're gonna take a good solid year, okay on like this that. yeah we're gonna take a year we're not gonna rush this, and they encouraged me to use as much suboxone as I needed to start off, and I guess the the thinking behind that was we don't ever want you to. Especially at first, when you start this process, they didn't ever want me to feel like, I don't know, like this might not be enough. So they were very liberal with how much I could start with. And let me back up a little bit. To get into this program or to, to use this program, you had to meet with a physician who actually subscribed the, uh, the prescription for the Suboxone pills. And then you also had to meet with a, uh, a psychiatrist. And they worked together. That was the deal. If you didn't meet with both of them every week, deals off um so but that's the accountability i was looking for like it was it was a perfect program for for what i needed to do so you start on maybe two eight milligrams eight milligrams a day something yeah. like that how slow did you go down do you remember pretty slowly i mean you know at the time i was um 
I was in a relationship with, with somebody who was not from the world of heroin at all. And I really, you know, I was real for, you know, for that reason. And just in general, I was, I was motivated to be done with heroin. So, um, I was, I, I realized pretty quickly that two 16 milligrams a day was way more than I needed. So I kind of took a big chunk off the top and I think I went from, from 16 down to eight milligrams fairly quickly. We stayed there for maybe four or five months. And then um, I would just kind of start breaking it down slowly. And I'd say the last month I was taking maybe two milligrams a day. Now, did they tell you, like, all right, we're going to go down to this amount? This was a conversation that we had every week. Okay. So they would be like, you know, what have you been taking? And they would just prescribe, what again, whatever I asked for. If I, if I told them, you know what, I think I need another year on this, I'm pretty confident they would have gone along with that. Okay. And just taking our time with it, but again, I was I was pretty motivated. I I had a strong desire to not have any crutches mm -hmm. in my life. Oh, I, I, I just that. wanted to not worry about needing a pill mm -hmm. because I did. I needed the Suboxone. I mean, I remember a few times, like it, you know, if we were away for the weekend, one time in particular, I left my uh, the bottle of Suboxone in the drawer. And we were like three hours away. And I was like, turn around, that turn feeling. around. Know that feeling. I don't care, whatever. Like, it's just, I, and there at that point, I was still taking a decent amount of Suboxone. Um, but I, yeah, I definitely needed it. Okay, so at what point do you remember that you started maybe not feeling as good? You know what I mean? Like, you're on a dose where you're probably feeling pretty good. You know what I mean? Not high, but you know, you're feeling level. What, like, when did you start maybe feeling a little bit of withdrawal? You know, honestly, and I, I'm not sure, I, I, I think this is mostly, it was mostly uh, maybe a like, kind of placebo effect sort of thing. I really felt great all the way up until it was gone. Really? I did. So, I like, mean, the, okay, so the last doses you were taking, how much do you think it was? Like, half a milligram, milligram? A milligram. I know you were breaking down really small. They were small. I'd say sometimes it was, it was maybe actually absolutely half a milligram. Okay. And, again, I, I mean, looking back, I would have to, and I don't, I don't know the exact science. I, I know a little bit about it. I don't know how effective a half a milligram could be maybe we just we took that year we weaned it off right and it was it was okay but I will say you know if I went from if I had two milligrams on week 50 and then I had one milligram on week 51 and then the last week of Suboxone I had half a milligram there was not a big difference between those three weeks okay but I remember specifically waking up the day that it was gone and being like oh, I don't feel the same about anything mm -hmm. and it sucked um, it was, it was, it was not easy, but it was, it was what I was preparing myself for. So can you explain that first day where you had none, what were your quote unquote withdrawal symptoms like, if you want to call them withdrawals, like what were you feeling? Um, anxious. Okay. So there wasn't a ton of, I, I can't say that there was a lot of the physical symptoms that I was used to with, um, with heroin withdrawal. Um, like you weren't like cold sweating and that type of stuff. No, nothing like that. Maybe some restless legs. And I don't, again, I don't know if that was just driven from the anxiety or, or what that was. Um, it wasn't, and I can't say that it was terrible. It was just, you know, it was that, it was that time where you're like, this is the hard part. Like this is, gotcha. this is where you need to make sure you have your shit together. But it was manageable. It was manageable. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you have to understand and, and I, talk to people who are going through addiction or have been through addiction and people who have been through it, um, they completely get it. You have to understand that living through addiction, and you know this, you're, you're high for so long, you don't just get out of that without, yeah, without pain. pain. You're paying. Pain, yeah. And, you know, if you're, if you're getting ready to approach um, recovery or you want to kind of get out of this addiction... It's, you know, and, and Greg and I have talked about this in videos before. You're going to you're gonna go through the fire. It's going to suck a little bit. You can mitigate how bad it sucks by, you know, getting on a good maintenance program, maybe working with a therapist, working with a, a physician who's actually 
you know, working in your best interest. But just embrace it. Embrace the challenge. Go through it. You're going to be stronger on the other side. You're going to learn things about yourself that you would have never found out any other way yeah, about how strong you really are. So it, it's going to be a little painful, but it doesn't it doesn't get that bad. It, every day gets better. Yeah. So you kind of dip down for a couple weeks, I say, and then the bright spots start coming, and it's you know you can turn it around pretty quick. I think I think that's really uh, that was really good information you gave because I think it tells like that long maintenance program is really a, a solid way to go. Yeah. Because I think I I went through a long maintenance program with methadone, which we can talk about in another video. But I think it's like you know you you went through the whole thing, you went that far, you remember what regular withdrawal feels like, and you're expecting to be uncomfortable, and you're like, well, all right, so for you, you're like, you know, I went through a year of doing this, I know I'm gonna be a little uncomfortable. I can compare it to regular withdrawal, which is absolutely horrible. So right. I can deal with this, yeah. and I'm already committed. Yeah. So I really like what you laid out there for people on on your progress because you really you didn't start feeling it till the day you stopped taking it, and you were prepared for that day to get a little bit of a battle going on. So. Yeah, yeah. And everybody kind of was aware of what was going on. Like it, you know, it's not like. And I, to your point, I went through the entire year of it. I was done. I wasn't worried about myself going back and using heroin at that point. Like after a year, those contacts, like those people, I was out of that. Out of the world. I was out of that world. So it wasn't even an option either way. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I think a long maintenance program, it can be hugely beneficial. Awesome. I think that was really helpful, Matt. Uh, really good information there. For anyone who's interested of how, you know, how hard is it to come off some boxing, I think I agree with you that the like that long route is a really good way to go, and if you're prepared for it, it's really not that bad at the end. You know, if you're worried about regular withdrawal, you're not going to go through withdrawal like no. like you like you normally would. Yeah, no, not all at right, all. Awesome, good stuff, Matt. Appreciate it. Uh, if you guys have any more questions on this topic, let us know, and we'll cover whatever you need. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon.